Hey friends, it's Alex and today I am sharing with you all of the books that I got in April. I forgot what month it just was. All of the books I got in April. <laughs> This is a smaller stack than usual, but I am also not being very good at like recording the books I've bought each month, so I may have missed some. But these are the ones that I know I bought in April, so these are the ones I'm going to go through with you today. First up, I have The Atlas Six by Livy Blake. Um, this is the Illumicrate edition, and it is absolutely stunning. It's like holographic and shiny and pretty on the cover and then it's got these most amazing sprayed edges I've ever seen. I am obsessed. These edges are why I bought this edition. Like just these edges. Even though the rest of it is stunning, these edges. <laughs> it's also got art on the end papers and it's got more holographic stuff under the dust jacket. It's just so pretty. I don't really know what this one's about, everyone was just hyping it up and this edition was really pretty and so I bought it, but I know it's Dark Academia, I think, <laughs> and I do want to get more into Dark Academia, especially since I really liked Ninth House and that was like the first one I ever read I think. No, I read uh, The Secret History which I'm pretty sure is Dark Academia and I didn't really like that at all. <laughs> but yeah, I, wanted, I keep wanting to get more into it and try some others out so I picked this one up. Let me just read you the synopsis. Welcome to the Alexandrian Society. When the world's best magicians are offered an extraordinary opportunity, saying yes is easy. Each could join the secretive Alexandrian Society whose custodians guard lost knowledge from their ancient civilizations. Their members enjoy a lifetime of power and prestige, yet each decade only six practitioners are invited to fill five places. Contenders Libby Rhodes and Nico di Verona are inseparable enemies, cosmologists who can control matter with their minds. Parisia Kamali is a telepath who sees the mind's deepest secrets. Raina Mori is a naturalist who can perceive and understand the flow of life itself. And Callum Nova is an empath who can manipulate the desires of others. Finally, there's Tristan Kane, whose powers mystify even himself. Following recruitment by the mysterious Atlas Blakely, they travel to the Society's London headquarters. Here, each must study and innovate within esoteric subject areas, and if they can prove themselves over the course of a year, they'll survive, most of them. So I didn't realise that was like had magic in it as well, so that makes me even more interested, and hopefully I can get to this one soon. I believe the sequel has already been announced, so I would like to pick this up soon so that I know whether I like it enough to get the sequel. So hopefully that happens, but we will see. <laughs> Next up I have The No Show by Beth O'Leary. This is Beth O'Leary's fourth book. I've read her three others, love them so much. Uh, she is like one of my auto-buy authors now. Um, so yeah, when I heard about this one I knew I had to pick it up. I also picked up a signed copy which is really nice. 8.52am. Siobhan is looking forward to her breakfast date with Joseph. She was surprised when he suggested it. She normally sees him late at night in her hotel room. Breakfast on Valentine's Day surely means something. So where is he? 2.43pm. Miranda's hoping that a Valentine's Day lunch with Carter will be the perfect way to celebrate her new job. It's a fresh start and a sign that her life is falling into place. She's been dating Carter for five months and things are getting serious. But why hasn't he shown up? 6.30pm. Joseph Carter agreed to be Jane's fake boyfriend at an engagement party. They have not known each other long, but their friendship is fast becoming the brightest part of her new life in Winchester. Joseph promised to save Jane tonight, but he's not here. Meet Joseph Carter, that is, if you can find him. And it just sounds really interesting and really fun, and I can't wait to get to it. Also, the audiobook has like multiple narrators and it sounds really good, so I will probably pick this one up on audio. Next up is one of my most anticipated books of the year, and that is The Romantic Agenda by Claire Kahn. Uh, Claire Kahn wrote one of my favourite books ever, which is Let's Talk About Love. It is like the most relatable book I've ever read in my entire life, and I love it so much. And so when I heard about this book, I was really, really excited. I knew I had to read it. Um, so the reason that I love Let's Talk About Love and the reason I'm so excited for this one is they have asexual characters, and I'm asexual, and I just like reading about them. 
so I'm very very keen to get to this one but I don't know when it will happen again I've got Yauk coming up so I need to start all my reading for that so a lot of these are going to get pushed to the side for the next couple of months but hopefully this year. Flirty, flirty and asexual, Joy is secretly in love with her best friend Malcolm but she's never been brave enough to say so. When he unexpectedly announces that he's met the love of his life and no it's not Joy, she's heartbroken. Malcolm invites her on a weekend getaway and Joy decides it's her last chance to show him exactly what he's overlooking but maybe Joy is the one missing something, or someone, and his name is Fox. Fox sees a kindred spirit in Joy and decides to help her. He proposes they pretend to fall for each other on the weekend trip to make Malcolm jealous. But spending time with Fox shows Joy what it's like to not be the third wheel and there's no mistaking the way he makes her feel. Could Fox be the romantic partner she's always deserved? I can't wait. I love Claire Kahn writes books where the main characters are asexual but still like interested in romance and still for romantic attraction and like that's me so I definitely love her books especially about asexuality I love any book with an asexual character but hers especially just because I find them so relatable so yeah hopefully I will get to this one this year fingers crossed okay next I have The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan this is one of the Goldsboro sci-fi fantasy fellowship books I feel like it might be the February one because it says published by Orbit in association with Goldsboro Books February 2022 so I don't know what happened but I apparently only received the February book in April so that's fun oh my god there's nowhere I can point this without it reflecting something okay there we go <laughs> I have no idea what this is about I'd never heard of it before it came but it looks interesting and I just I've been slowly getting more and more into adult fantasy and so the Goldsboro Sci-Fi Fantasy Fellowship has been really good to like give me a range to choose from as I start getting into it more and see what I like. I haven't actually picked any up yet because I'm the worst but I am looking forward to finally diving into some of them and all of the ones I've received so far do sound really interesting and this one is no exception. The Empire of the Wolf simmers with unrest. Rebels, heretics and powerful Patricians? I have no idea what that word is, I've never heard it before in my life. Okay, all challenge the might of the Imperial Throne. Only the Order of Justices stands in the way of chaos. Sir Conrad von Volt is the most feared justice of all, upholding the law by way of his sharp mind, arcane powers and skill as a swordsman. At his side stands Helena Sedanka, his talented protégé. Protégé, protégé, I don't know, I do know that word this time, I just don't know how to say it. Orphaned by the wars that forged the empire. When the pair investigates the murder of a provincial aristocrat, they unearth a conspiracy which stretches to the very top of imperial society. As the stakes rise and become ever more personal, Von Volt and Helena must make a choice. Will they abandon the laws they've sworn to uphold in order to protect the empire? So yeah. That sounds really cool. I'm keen to check it out. It's also not too long for a fantasy. So yeah, I'm hoping to try and get to some of my Goldsboro collection soon. So hopefully this will be one of the ones I pick up. <laughs> Next up I just picked up a cute little graphic novel thing. It's a quick and easy guide to asexuality. Like it is really little. Like this is a standard paperback. And this is the size of this graphic novel, it is so tiny. Um, I saw this one on NetGalley and I was approved for it and then I didn't download it in time and it got archived. So I bought it um, and it's just about asexuality. It's like factual, it's not fiction. And it's just about asexuality and I thought I would just give it a go. And I just wanted to check it out and see if I thought it was like a good thing to recommend. So I am planning on doing a reading vlog where I read this and another asexual graphic novel I have and just talk about them. So keep an eye out for that. Now that I actually have this, it can happen. <laughs> the next book I got is Dragon Rising by Katie and Kevin Sang. I have been collecting these up. They just look really cute. I love dragon books. Um, these are middle grade. This is the fourth book in a series and the series is like middle grade and it's about dragons. I haven't even read the first one yet so I don't really know what it's all about. But I have been collecting these up and I'm keen to give it a go. And I've been picking them up as they come out because they have these really pretty scale sprayed edges on like 
I don't know if it's just the first print run, but it's not on all of them. So I keep picking them up as they come out so that I get the spread edges. And this one I will hopefully actually read soon because um, Katie Sang is going to be at Yauk. So it is on my Yauk TBR. So this is one I can hopefully get to. And I can't tell you what this one is about because it's the fourth book in the series. But I am excited to get to it and all I needed to know was that there were dragons to pick it up. Only two more books left. First of those two is Why Didn't They Ask Evans by Agatha Christie. I've seen like this new show being advertised on telly for this one and so I wanted to pick it up so I can read it hopefully before I watch the show but I also just really want to get on with watching the show so I might watch it before I read it. But I wanted to pick it up anyway, I have it now so that the option is there. And I will read you the synopsis again. This one says, while playing an erratic round of golf, Bobby Jones slices his ball over the edge of a cliff. His ball is lost, but on the rocks below he finds the crumpled body of a dying man. With his final breath, the man opens his eyes and says, why didn't they ask Evans? Haunted by these words, Bobby and his vivacious companion, Frankie, set out to solve a mystery that will bring them into mortal danger. I can't wait to read this. It's going to be excellent. I know I've not, I've been disappointed by one Agatha Christie book. I was about to say I haven't been disappointed by any, but that's a lie disappointed by one and it was Destination Unknown and it wasn't really a mystery so I think that was why it didn't really work for me but I've not been disappointed by any of her like murder mystery books so I am really quite excited to pick this one up hopefully soon and then the last book that I know I hauled this month because I probably haul more but I've forgotten them because I was bad at recording them this month um, is The Girl in the Moon by Mark Lawrence. This is the third book in the Book of the Ice series and it's the final book. So I have the whole series now and I can finally get around to reading it. I am really excited to check this one out. I've heard really good things about the series and I've heard really good things about just Mark Lawrence's books in general. So I am keen to check them out. Again, I can't tell you what this one's about because it's the third book in a series. But from what I remember, I think the first book is like they live on a planet that's ice and if you're different you get chucked out of the village and have to die in the ice or something like that. I don't really remember. There's some kind of hole. I'm intrigued and I can finally, I like to marathon my series, I like to read them all back to back so now that I have them all I can finally check this one out and see what I think of it and give it a go. <laughs> so those are all the books that I got in April. If there are any in this stack that you think I should prioritise let me know. Like I said though, it probably won't happen until after Yalk at the beginning of July because I need to read all my Yalk books and there are a lot of those. <laughs> and I realised this morning that I've only got like two months to do that, so yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, let me know what books you got this month or if there are any books in this stack that you liked or that you're excited to read. Please like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye!